I'm Erica Jacoby, and this is another Higher Things video short. It's Woke Wednesday today, and we are taking on chest feeding. What's that all about? Pastor Borghart and I might have to go back to health class again. If you love what we are doing here at Higher Things, uh, making the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young, uh, young adults alike, Please like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, share, get our app, and donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, a youth organization that's all about the gospel, it keeps us a rolling. And um, time to talk to you, Pastor Borghart. I've uh, I've stole I've I've stolen the intro today. Um, Thanks for letting me do that. In fact, you insisted that I do that because because you love the topic that I've chosen so much today, don't you, buddy? We're going back to health class. All right. Sounds good. The birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. All right. So St. Patrick's breastplate yesterday and today chest <laughs> feeding. I'm not very comfortable. Uh, what is chest feeding and why is that a woke term, Erica? So the reason this came up uh, is that uh, recently, actually last month uh, fe in February, some midwives in England and Wales were given guidance from um, their hospital system on ways to offer uh, more support to transgender and non-binary parents, um, including incorporating new gender inclusive language, um, such as chest feeding instead of breastfeeding, um, birthing parents instead of um, mom and dad. Um, so it was actually the Brighton and Sus Sussex University Hospital Trust. Um, they are the first in country to formally implement this new gender inclusive language policy for its maternity department, which are now going to be known as prenatal services. Um, the staff have been instructed that Breast milk should be replaced with phrases like human milk or chest milk. Um, the the it's, it's very fun to watch your reaction to all of this. Um, in all seriousness, though, um, other changes include replacing the use of woman uh, with woman or person and father with parent or co-parent um, or second biological parent, sort of depending on the circumstances. Um, so... Again, um, second biological parent. Correct. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, so it, it, they have said, and this is a quote, that the science behind the use of the term chest feeding is not focused on human anatomy. It is the science of health communication, which requires using terms that are familiar and accepted by those being helped. And so the people that they're after helping is the is uh, the transgender population. Um, if you want to look up like how this all works, that's, a, that's sort of a different biological topic on how some people can breastfeed and all that. I didn't want to go into that today because that's it. That's it. That, yeah, that's, that's not <laughs> up your alley. Um, uh, they say that language is always evolving um, in the breastfeeding and lactation world as elsewhere. And many of the terms that were used 20 to 30 years ago are unfamiliar to parents today. Um, a lot of people have heard of the La Leche League. Um, La Leche League is kind of a well-known organization that promotes um, breastfeeding for mothers as the healthiest and best way to go. Um, and so they, that's that's kind of why- Do they have good cake? Are you trying Trace Leche's cake? Yeah, so they have good cake. The oh boy, wow. Um, I don't know. I I I, <clears throat> I don't know that. I just I'm not even going to allow you to derail me today. Um, but anyway, they're they're saying that we must continue to adapt and evolve um, as language in the lactation area does as well. So that's kind of the history behind it. Um, there you go. You're welcome. It's, it's a, it's a story. It's going, it's a, it's happening. It's going on. And the Le Leche League in, um, uh, you know, America is also, um, uh, has also come out in support of this as well. So right, it's, so it's backlash, legit. Backlash, any backlash over this? Cer yeah, certainly. So, um, it's, it has sparked a lot of controversy on social media. 
Uh, there are folks who applauded it, and then there are others who have said it's sort of a waste of resources and time, and it's confusing and undermining um, to women. Uh, one one tweet um, that's kind of come out against this uh, that I thought was worth mentioning, uh, someone said, "What what is with the misogyny? On what authority are biological men trying to remove the word woman from our language? What's the aim? Why aren't we standing together to protect our beautiful language and those who raise our children? They're called women. So they're, the, some of the backlash has been um, when we're trying to um, be so inclusive, what are we doing for other folks who in the past have um, needed to fight a little bit, like you know, in feminism, uh, for women, for women's rights, and for things that are helpful to women, they feel that this is undermining. Um, it's part of a larger discussion culturally uh, with things that are going on in terms of, um, you know, uh, transgender bathrooms. Um, Target, for one, has alienated actually a large um, a group of their demographic that shop there because, um, like moms don't necessarily want to take a little kid into a bathroom and then find a, you know, a transgender male there. It's just kind of a, an uncomfortable situation. Um, and so Target is spending over $20 million to, um, to address that situation, kind of that demographic that they've sort of, uh, have upset, um, in, in women's sports, um, people are, uh, you know, there's been some backlash as well about allowing, um, uh, men who identify as women to, uh, to compete in sports and it has basically kind of ruined sports and ruined some college scholarship from some really great female athletes. So, um, it's part of a larger conversation, which is why I brought it up today. It's, um, um, there's, it's, it's pretty confusing. Um, and folks are upset about it, understandably so. So uh, it's now is the time of the conversation where I get to tell you, hey, Pastor Borghart, I'm I'm confused. As a Christian, are we are we being un, unloving and unchristian if we don't agree that this is good and wise? Um, are we are we bigots and trans haters? How do we sort of um, how do we sort of interact in this in this world that's where the lines are sort of blurring and where are the boundaries? Can you kind of help us out? Talk us through that. Well, I think that, um, first off, let's address. Okay. Language is ever changing. And, sure. and so there's no real sin in changing language. So whether it's whatever kind of feeding you want to call it, isn't isn't going isn't isn't going to actually change the act of it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think that I think that, and that, that's like the same with pronouns. Uh, with those uh, with sort of transgender individuals, um, I I don't know whether or not if our goal is to deliver the gospel and comfort troubled consciences in the forgiveness of sins, I don't know how helpful it is. To um, and 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 I'm and I'm the least woke person on the uh, in the known in the known yeah. universe. As I just mm -hmm. demonstrated, uh, if if somebody was woke and watched my reactions to this, um, they're probably not gonna. They're gonna probably be if they survived. They're gonna be surprised at my. I don't really care painful. what what pronouns we use for people. Pronouns are just a language language thing. Um, and so like that really isn't, if we're trying to sort of love people, then we should give them the pronouns that they want to, to, to receive. Um, now, that does not change the fact that um, uh, identifying as a man when you're a woman or identifying as a woman when you're a man does not change the science of a thing. Um, I think Shapiro says it really well. Um, facts don't care about your feelings. So you feel like you feel like a guy, but you're actually a girl. Then you're actually a girl. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. if if somebody pulled you over on the road. Um, mm -hmm. This is the unwoke part of me. Uh, if somebody pulled you over the road and said you were going 75, and you're like, actually, I self-identify as a person who's driving 45. You're still going to get the ticket. If you're driving in a 75 and a 45, you're still going to get the ticket. So facts don't care about how you feel. Um, having said that. I don't think it's really helpful in a discussion and with somebody to win them over to get bogged down in the pronouns or the language. Now, does that mean that you're being 
that you're being a trans hater. Was I being a trans hater earlier when I said that facts don't care about your feelings? No, it just means that an XY chromosome is a male chromosome. An XX chromosome is a female chromosome. An XX chromosome can't be an XY and an XY can't be an XX. You'll know, they're by their, you'll know them by their X's. <laughs> but the fact is, though, that, uh, okay, we could disagree on this. We can have a discussion about it if we do it in a loving way, okay? So I, I, the cringeworthy part of this, this, this episode for me was not the subject matter, uh, 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 the language, it, it, it's the subject matter. This is an uncomfortable topic for me. I'm a guy. <laughs> All right. But, um, but, the, but the fact of the matter is that um, you're not unloving if you have an issue with this. Because, because this is starting, this is one of those places where the science and the, um, and the language are running up against each other in an absurd way. Um, if we were talking about sports, an average male, an average male, an average male or a below average male will probably compete better in a sport than a athletic female. Genetically designed by God this way, even evolutionarily speaking, if you're talking about it. And so we're like in an, in an attempt to appease one section of, of our population like alienating a whole group of it. it, it I, someday we're going to have to have the, uh, talk about the fairness of this. Because if you're a girl and you're a wrestler, um, when you wrestle boys, um, unless you're, unless you're um, uh, Hosatano's daughter who, uh, <laughs> who like beats boys for a living wrestling, um, you're going you're gonna to run up against just simply um, biological limitation you're only yeah. so strong in comparison to men um at the same age so the issue here is you know loving i'll use whatever pronoun you want but i um in order to get get a discussion going on but it's not just it's not unloving to disagree with somebody especially when woke stuff is so fluid yeah that it changes from day to day and the best example of this is that synod confirmation hearing for, I guess, Amy Coney Barrett, mm -hmm. where she used, um, I don't remember what language specifically she used, but it was oh. like, um, it was like lifestyle choice or, or sexual mm -hmm. preference she used. Mm -hmm. And like one of the senators called her out for, it's like, that's not a right term, except up until that point, it was a fair term up until right. that moment, it was a fair term. And so uh, I don't think you should let a group of individuals who we don't know who they are on Twitter determine uh, whether or not you're bigoted or not by what language you use, which is an ever-changing thing. Um, having said that, stay away from racist, you know, like racist, racist epithets, epithets yeah. and, and the like, words that are obviously racist and full of hatred, have a history of being racist and full of hatred. But like when there, when there isn't, and on the other end, we should be forgiving. Um, if you're woke, try to exercise some love. Your language is changing daily. And, and it's impossible to keep up with it. So if um, somebody uses a, a term that is, um, has been labeled racist two years ago, and they're just not up to speed on it, you might want to cut them some slack. Um, and it also doesn't work. Uh, here comes my rant. To, to go back 50 years to a term that you just deemed racist and condemn somebody for 50 years ago for using a term you just deemed racist. Um, you know what happens when you do that? If you live by the woke uh, language sword, you die by the woke language sword. Somebody is going to cancel you shortly, which is where all this is going to end. So, like, setting aside the the transgender issue and and its its ramifications for Christianity, um, I would just simply say that the, look, look, I don't really care about what language and what words you use. Um, if you work with me and help me along the way, with with coming up to speed, I, I guess I like chest feeding better because um, it it doesn't involve other words that I'm not comfortable with saying in public. But um, uh, that's only because I have the maturity of a five year old. True story. But, 
Too but sorry. again, we need to exercise some love on all ends, on all yeah. sides. So That's we the best can, I can do. Yeah, could actually have a conversation. Otherwise, we can't have a conversation without gonna, putting the worst construction on everything another person says. Right. If we're not gonna, if we're not going to find a way to have common ground, then we're going to end up in a it, hating each other. Which I think, no offense, um, is the purpose of the woke movement. Well, and 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 our and our goal as Christians is to share the gospel. Right. We we want to share the gospel. Um, that Jesus died and rose again for, for our sins and we're good with God. And, um, that's the message that we want to get across. It's one of, it's kind of anti-woke in a lot of ways, I would say. Um, and so, uh, I, for me, um, some of the, the quickly changing language is confusing because, um, I want to love and serve my neighbor and I want to be able to discuss, talk with my neighbor. Uh, so, so, um, Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Borghardt. That was that was an interesting conversation. Thanks for rolling with me. Erica Jacoby is the face that runs the place in higher things. She's the executive director, which is also like the queen of the organization. She rules with an iron scepter. Um, fear her wrath. I'm just kidding. Wow. Nice person. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, thank you, Erica. Thank you. All right. Let's not really care about the pronouns we use or the words that we use. Let's try to be loving and kind. It is the only way that we'll communicate love and kind. We don't have to agree with them. We can pick them up. We can actually tell people, honestly, I'm going to use the pronouns you like, even though I'm not really comfortable with it. Is that okay with you? Um, the law of love. Love others as you like to love your, uh, be loved. Um, probably has a lot of sway here. There's a lot more conversation that we can have on this topic, um, but we're running out of time. Uh, comments and questions, if we didn't do a good job on it, go ahead and put it in the, 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 the comment stream. Um, please forgive my immaturity. Um, I'm not comfortable with a lot of things, and this is one that Jacoby just threw on me. Have a blessed day. I'm Pastor George Borkart, along with Erica Jacoby, and this has been another Higher Things video short.